The Hopewell furnace, which operated nearly year-round, produced molten iron for casting in its hot charcoal fires. Casting of iron products was one of the most respected and well-paid professions in the industry. At least twice a day, a group of molders gathered in front of the cast arch to watch the founder examine the drops of iron and slag. The men anxiously awaited the founder's word. The good gray iron, suitable for casting stove plates, was a welcome sight. Wages were on a piecework basis, determined by the number of castings produced. If the iron passed inspection, the founder opened the tap hole and the hand ladles were filled. A small stream of metal is carefully poured through the gate of the mold. The apparently simple job of pouring the liquid metal requires skill and judgment. Pouring too rapidly can dislodge sand particles and spoil the cast. Pouring too slowly can cause shrink holes due to improper cooling and hardening. Insufficient venting of the steam generated from moisture in the sand can cause blowholes, making the casting resemble a honeycomb. The workers return repeatedly to the furnace for molten iron until each mold in the room is filled. After cooling, the flasks are opened and the casting shaken out. This was a very important moment for the molder because only perfect castings earn full credit in his account. Defective castings were sold as scrap iron and pay was cut accordingly. The best paid molder in 1836, a good year at Hopewell, was John Sheeler. He earned $434.83 by producing parts for 352 and a half stoves. The molding casting cycle continued, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, stopping only when the furnace or equipment needed repairs. <laughs> 